Hello, welcome to uh, uh, our 3D modeling course here. Um, I am starting here with, uh, well, I've done some character sketches, and you might want to do something like this. This is not required, but it's kind of a good idea to do uh, to help your, uh, set yourself up with uh, with what it is that you're wanting to sketch. So what I did here was I did a, a three-way view. I did a I started off kind of with a three-quarter view because that seems to be, you know, like uh, the easiest to do the position to look at your character. And then from there, I did a front view, and I did a side view. Um, and I did this really sketchy because, I mean, we can put in a lot of time into it. Um, uh, and we can do that. But, uh, you know, I'm just kind of wanting to more focus on what are my general shapes that I'm trying to represent in my character. Uh, and so in doing so, you can see that here I've I've got like a you know, kind of a, a blockish head, a cylinder for a neck, a broad broad shoulders, really a, a, like a superhero type of, of uh, proportions and body shapes here. Very rounded chest, a cylinder for the, the waist, um, kind of diamond-shaped forearms and lower legs while having uh, this very uh, rounded uh, shape to the thigh here and and uh, a lot of straights against curves kind of thing going on here. Um, if you're familiar with that concept of straights against curves, I can show you one really quick here. Kind of like, here's a, a oops. Here's a, a, a straight, and then going against it is this curve, and how this kind of, right here, and how this kind of like like here in the thigh that's happening and then kind of again in the uh, lower leg we've got a little bit of you know going like this and it's kind of if you're familiar at all with the concept of force um was that michael tessie's book um you know where this creates this energy that kind of goes down here pushes your eye through here and this and it comes to like this smaller opening and then opens back up but it's kind of a thing to where it's it's stacked right it comes down here boom boom and it guides the eye right so that's what i'm looking to do here in my design um one of the key but you know you do not have to do what i am doing here you do not have to do a hero or a male you could do female you could do any sort of character um let's see i think i have open another uh thing here here's another character this is something from uh looks like um this is another character sheet but it looks like something from the gorillas or something like that you know um they even have a back view um you know anything a cartoony thing is fine um and so the one of the key elements here that i did was i made different layers but i also if i'm using my brush tool here in photoshop i can hold shift and if i'm holding shift i can just simply draw straight across to create these guidelines Holding shift will do that. Um, let's see here. I have, oops, this one here. And, oops, I'm wanting to draw before I push shift or it also will make one from the last place I continued. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm drawing these guidelines in this way. And then what I do in the end, um, I don't need that now. What I do in the end is I can use my crop tool, and I can then I want them all to be the same height, you know. So I would do that. Let's say this is even from the top and bottom. Click enter, and then I'll do another one where they're all the same height. But I'm going to go ahead and do one, and I'll I'll crop this, enter, 
and I will go to File, Save As, and I will save it on my computer, and I will save this. I'll do uh, Save a Copy, and I'll save it as a, what, a ping or a JPEG, either one, and I will just call this Side View. I'll click Save. And I'll do the same for the front view, same for the uh, three-quarter view. Actually, I'm not going to worry about the three-quarter view. So I'm doing that. Um, again, this is not required. You could just jump right into ZBrush. You don't have to do this. But if you do do it, uh, these are kind of the standards I go by. Okay, and here I am opening up ZBrush for the first time. You see this thing that says ZBrush homepage? This just has various uh, tutorials and things that you could visit and watch. I'm going to close it out. And uh, here I have it open for the first time here. There's nothing here. I will just go ahead and click this thing that says default project.zp here in this light box. I'll double click that. And when I do that, it opens up with this sphere that's already here. Okay, so uh, what I want to do, uh, some of the things, this is a real brief uh, going over the, the, um, the, the interface here. Uh, you see if I hover over, I'm using uh, my own uh, Cintiq. Um, if you have some sort of Huion tablet of some kind uh, or any tablet, drawing tablet can work. A Wacom will work. Um, the Huion's Canvas 16 are around $400 right now. You also get a 13 for like $250. You know, I know that who has that kind of money right now, but maybe uh, it's you would find it uh, worth your your time and your money to buy. I do like interacting directly with my screen, um, but you know, it's anything that'll work. You could even use your mouse. So I am simply drawing here, and when I draw right on it, it adds to what I'm creating. And when I want to spin around, what if I want to uh, manipulate, uh, look around this thing? Um, I can click on the background and click and drag. So pretty much clicking anywhere on here, whether you're using your tablet, your mouse will add. Clicking on the background will rotate around it. Okay, so now what if I want to do the opposite? Instead of adding, I want to dig in. I can click Alt, and Alt does pretty much the opposite action. Uh, it is our alternative here, basically. Alt, Alt stands for alternative, right? Um, and so that will dig in. It will do the opposite action, Alt will. If I hold Alt, and click and drag on the background, it will pan. It will pan. Okay. Now, what if I want to zoom in? I'm holding Alt and I'm clicking and dragging on the background, and I'm just keeping my pen to the surface here. And then if I let go of Alt, but I keep my pen to my tablet surface, I'll let go of Alt. I can go up and down here. I'm still dragging my pen on the surface. And it zooms in and zooms out. If you're using your mouse, that would be your click. So I'm holding my click, and then I'll click Alt. Here, Alt and click will pan. And then if I don't let go of my mouse button, I will let go of Alt. And that allows me to zoom in and zoom out. Okay, so zooming in, Alt, and then letting go of Alt while clicking and dragging. Okay. Now, let's say that I've done this stuff and I want to smooth. Shift. Shift is the button that will smooth. Okay. Shift on the background. Uh, Shift and Alt will put it back in. It's like if you've lost, let's say if I've panned and my thing is off screen. If I do Shift and Alt and click on my screen, it'll reset my view. It'll put it back right there. Also, look at this person here, this head on the top right. If I click it, it'll go into my front view. I can click and drag, and it'll go into a three-quarter view and a side view. 
in a back view. So this will put it like in its proper orthogonal view, right? Here is above, here is below at a three quarter, here is right in the middle up above. But I can also do that clicking and dragging here. This will just lock it into this is the complete front view, right? It locks it to its total front view or side view, whatnot. All right. Um, we're going to start adding some pieces and we want to add our drawing. So, to add our drawing into our view, I can go here to, um, let's see, I think it's here in the uh, draw. Yep, right here in draw. And I can go down to where it says floor. I can turn on floor. This is in the draw menu here at the top. I go down and I turn on floor. Okay, now I have a grid on the bottom. And if I go to where it says front and back, right here, I expand that and I can click map one. And here I am going to import my drawing for my front view. Let's see what I have here. So I should have. Um, and reference and here is front view open okay so i've imported that into my front view very cool i want to make sure at this point also to turn off this button that says perspective okay that'll make it so that what i'm drawing here matches what i have in my what i have in my uh my drawing what i'm sculpting will match it and go back up to draw and then i can go here again to where it says i'll scroll down to this other one and i'm looking at left and right and at left and right i can click map one import here is my hero side view okay if i click and drag and look at it oh look at that it's flipped if i go to draw again my side view I can click left to right. I can click flip. Look at that. Now it's facing front. That's what I want. Facing front, facing front. There we go. And if I look here, here is my side view. I'm dragging on this head. There's my side view. Here's my front view. Okay. So there we've laid out our drawings. We can see that they're pretty evenly matched there. I want to, on this first thing that I've made here, I want to make say my head so i will go ahead i will expand here on the right where it says subtool the subtool section here on the right and i will rename this i will call this i will click you see we have it selected i will click rename and i'm going to call it head enter head All right and up at the top here I will go into where it says move mode and I have this this item here this gizmo I can move it by clicking on this arrow the arrow that goes up and down okay I can rotate my view by clicking on the background I can move it in place I click my side view I can click right where I see where right where it goes and then I can see here I have this yellow box that's in the middle that's to scale. That's to scale uniformly. I'll go back into my front view. I raise this up. And I'm going to scale this down. There we go. Let's see if I go to my side view. I'll move this forward a little bit. And I'll scale it up a little. Front view, I'm scaling. I'm scaling from this x-axis, this red block right here, right, and the, the blue one here is, is from the z-axis, and I'm scaling it. All right, very good. I'll go back into my. I'll just leave it in draw mode for right now. All right, I've made my head. Now I can click here where it says on the right. Append, append, 
I'm clicking that and I get this window that window that opens. I can go over here to where it says sphere 3D. I'm adding a new sphere. And I could see it here. It's centered in the middle here. You can see it on my list. It's called PM3D Sphere 3D1. I've selected that. And I'm going to move it up. And I'm going to scale it down. And let's see, I'm going to make this my, let's look at the front view, let's scale it down. This is going to be my neck. Scale it up on the y-axis. Move it this way. I'll move it here to the side view. Okay. Uh, I'll go and I'll click rename. I'm going to call it neck. Right. All right, so we're going to continue the same actions. We're going to continue the same things here as we create our chest, our stomach, our pelvis. Or we could even make the torso into one piece if we wanted to. I'm going to click Append again. Select Sphere 3D. I'm going to select it here, and I will click Rename, and I'll call it Chest. And I will go ahead and bring it up. Let's look in my front view. Let's scale it down some. Let's see. Scale it down this way. Move it up. Let's look at my front view, or my side view. Scale here to the side. Look at this. I can even, if I click one of these circles here, I can rotate, rotate um, the object. That's one of this, like this red circle. So I can rotate it so that I'm getting that kind of, uh, you know, Bridgman. You're familiar with with uh, Bridgman's work. You know, we're creating these objects. That are kind of stacked in a way that that uh, reflect our gesture, the shape of the spine. Okay. All right. This is chest. I will click append again, and I will click sphere 3D, and I will select it. And this I will call rename. I'll call it stomach. Enter. Scaling this down, scaling it up, I'm moving it up, and I'm moving into my side view, and I'm moving it forward. There we go. Okay. There we go. Created that. Again, I will click Append. Same action. And I'm going to create one more Sphere 3D. And I'm going to scroll down in the list. And I'm going to select it. I'm going to click Rename. And I'm going to call it Pelvis. Enter. I'm going to scale it down. And scale um, here look in the front view that's pretty good let's look in the side view let's scale it a little thinner this way turn it up a little bit oops I don't want to turn it but I'm going to scale it up a little bit there we go All right. I can even turn it this way. I'm just talking about Bridgman and that whole stacking thing. All right, there's my pelvis. Okay, so from this point, uh, I'll select my chest. 
And I'm going to click draw mode. We've moved everything around. We've done all the centrally placed spheres. And now we're going to get into a whole new action. And this new action that we're going to do, we are going to do this inserting of uh, spheres of, of uh, we're going to be adding the limbs, basically. <clears throat> so if I'm looking at chest from the front view, and I can click here. Here is my brush. Remember, we were using this brush. We were sculpting. It's my standard brush. I want to make sure before I do anything, like I'm hovering above here, I want to change. I want to make sure that I have X, my symmetry on. You can see the circle on the right, and then that small little red square on the left that's indicating it's doing its action. If I click X, that'll turn it off. I only will be doing one thing on one side. I want to make sure it's on and I can see this other red dot on the other side. And then I'm adding stuff at the same time. So I'm going to click this brush, this brush menu. And I'm going to look for, uh, right in here, I'm looking for where it says we got a lot of brushes in here, a lot of stuff. Don't get intimidated. We're going to go here for the IMM Primitives brush. That's what we're using, IMM Primitives. I will click that. You see it gives me a choice of brushes that I want to use. The first one is a capsule, but I want to click something like Sphere 3D here, or Sphere, Sphere 32. And I will go ahead, and I'm going to start from this side here, and I'm going to click and drag. And there I'm adding something new there you see when i've added it that the chest that it came out of it added things both on each side right and where we added it to is this the chest is now darker color why is that what does that mean that dark color it's added a mask to it we'll go over masking later but for what we need to know right now we're going to click split and we're going to click this part that says split unmasked points. Where it is dark, it has become masked. And where it is light, it's unmasked. So I'm going to split those off. I'm going to click split unmasked points. And we see now this came from chest, and that's still selected. And it's made a copy called chest one. I'm going to select chest one. Here in my list, chest one. Those are my shoulders there. Now I'm going to click rename. And I'm going to call them shoulders. Enter. Okay. All right. From there, I'm going to start drawing my arm. Now, if you see in my drawing, I drew my arm going down. And that's okay. But I don't want to do that when I'm modeling. And the reason is, and I probably should have drawn it correctly in the first place. But the reason is, is that when I'm rigging this, I want it to be in like a T pose where the arms are going out to the sides completely. That'll make it a lot easier for me to rig it in the long run. So I've got sphere 32 uh, selected. I'm going to go ahead I can see my symmetry is on and I'm going to click and drag. And when I click and drag out, my ball gets real big here. I'm dragging one way. If I drag a different way while not letting go, just clicking, just still clicking and dragging, it kind of makes it, it shrinks it down in one axis. There we go. So I've added that. Do not let go and click and drag a second time, or you'll have multiple spheres. And if you've done that, just click Control Z to undo. So right now we have this one, we have the other one masked. We will click again, split. Unmasked points. We have selected the one that came from shoulders, and this new one is called shoulders one. We will click rename and call this upper arm. Upper arms. Okay, I've done that. Now I will click and drag from here. I'm just clicking and dragging one time one way, and then another time another way. I'm not letting go, I'm not deselecting. It's still the same click and drag. I'm just going one way and then another, and it makes it seem long. If you only go one way and it adds a sphere, and that's it, it's no big deal. It'll work fine. The sphere is fine. We're going to be shaping these and positioning these later. 
I'm going to click Split Unmass Points. I'll select it in the list here, Upper Arms 1, and I will click Rename and call it Lower Arms. Enter. Okay, there we go. And then I'm going to go ahead and click and drag and create a hand here. There we go. And I will click Split Unmass Points again. I will select it. It's called Lower Arms 1, and I will click Rename and call it Hands. Hands. There we go. Now I will go down to the pelvis. We're doing the same thing to the pelvis. We're going to add the legs. Okay, legs. For the legs, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. All right, I want to make sure I have my symmetry on. I don't see it on the other side, so I'm going to click X. There we go. Now I can see it. I'm going to click and drag coming down and then going another way. And there's my upper legs. They're at an angle. I don't care. I'll fix them later. Or I can fix them now. Let's see. For So hang on a minute. We're going to go to split unmasked points. And I'm going to select it here. It's called pelvis one. And I'm going to click rename and call these upper legs. Enter. I'm going to go into my move mode. I'm going to click the circle to rotate them down. There we go. Look at that. We're going to be doing this quite a bit with everything else, but we'll just do this with the upper legs because everything else will kind of come from that, right? Okay. Front view. I'll go ahead and uh, go back into draw mode. And again, I'm going to go ahead and click and drag. There's my lower legs. Go here to where it says split unmasked points. Same action again. Scroll down and select it in the list. Click rename and call it lower legs. Enter. And I'll just move them. If you don't want to do it now, you don't have to. We could do it later. Rotating. See these circles? That's what rotates. That's what I'm doing. Looking at one of these circles here. We're rotating it. There we go. Go back into draw mode. The front view. And I'm going to draw the feet. Here we go. And I've added it. I click Split Unmasked Points. I will select, select it in the list. Click Rename. Call it Feet. Enter. There we go. My side view. Uh, I can see my arms are going a little long. That's okay. I will move them into place later. But right now, we have the basics of our body laid out. That is good. So we're going to go to where it says at the top here. This is where we turn in. And we're going to click. We're going to save it. We go to Z plugin, this menu at the top. And I'm going to go down to where it says uh, Subtool Master. And I'm going to click Save Z Tool. File name, I will call this my last name, Bannon Basic Body One. I'll click Save. And that's it. So that's what I save. It'll save it in the folder I've designated as a ZTL, a Z tool file. That's what you want to use. That's what you want to open up. And that's what you want to turn in. When I go to close ZBrush, I'll close it. And it's going to ask me. Do I want to save my changes to ZBrush Project before closing? I always click no. Other people, they've saved it and they save it as this ZPR file. I prefer not to. And the reason is, is sometimes it'll lock it to the background and you don't know it. ZBrush has said, Maxon has claimed 
that they have fixed this and that it doesn't do that, but I've still seen it happen and it's kind of heartbreaking. So I will click no. I've already saved it as a ZTL file through Subtool Master. So I will click no. All right. And there we have it. That is our first assignment.